Professor Azeta Zerai. She's an associate professor of uh, soci uh, sociology here, and her topic is heart masculinity, state violence, and family well-being, childhood in Zimbabwe. Professor, you're welcome. Of the economy, 
And this, of course, has had deleterious effects on family well-being and especially child health. For example, violence during the Ugarahundi from 1980 to 1987 set the stage for the maldistribution of development resources in Zimbabwe until this day. In addition to political differences between the party in power, ZANU and ZAPU, ethnic tensions between the Shona and Indabele peoples exacerbated by party affiliation underlie this conflict and persistent inequalities. Violence during Guga Rahundi resulted in numerous deaths and increased infant mortality in affected regions. The slides provides evidence that politically motivated violence was supported by the state apparatus. The opportunity for the country of Zimbabwe to better serve its citizenry and to reach the Millennium Development Goals that the government agreed to decades ago has been severely undercut by Mugabe and his sorts, military priorities, and their quest for personal economic gain. I'm a demographer, so I analyzed the Zimbabwe Demographic and Health Surveys for the years shown. In 1988, eight years after independence, children under the age of five had a high rate of growth faltering. One third of children under the age of five, for example, experienced growth faltering in 1988, Sadly, in 2010, that percentage remains unchanged. The main causes of chronic malnutrition in Zimbabwe can be traced with a model inspired by Africana feminist methodology. I'm not going to get deeply into that methodology today, but one of the important features is that it examines what's going on in the context and not just individual behavior. Drought, a breakdown in drought feeding programs, financial crisis, high unemployment, and poverty are all factors that impact nutrient availability. A lack of access to health care is another problem that directly affects stunting. So for today's talk, I won't talk about all of the determinants here. We'll just focus on personal disease control and household contamination. Um, I'll be looking specifically at access to health care and um, access to water and sanitation. While well, access to health care improved for some during the first decade of independence, it quickly deteriorated afterward. Even within the first decade, economic structural adjustment policies reduced access to care. Moyo argues that health care, in, in theory, is provided free of charge to the majority of Zimbabwe's population. However, users, particularly in rural areas, are often unable to prove their eligibility and are therefore denied access. On this slide, I've also listed some other historical features that um, have affected access to health care. A watershed event was the unplanned payout to veterans in 1997 that crashed the country's stock exchange and began a downward economic spiral from which the country has not recovered. Campbell shows that uh, interventions in the Congo War diverted much needed resources for domestic health and social services to the military. And in 2003, Operation Restore Order targeted urban areas where 700,000 people lost their homes, sources of livelihood, or both. During times of economic crisis and political crisis, Questions were posed to mothers and other caretakers about problems that they faced accessing health care. In 1999, over one-third of caretakers reported that financial burdens were a big problem, and over half reported that they could not afford to pay for health services. These challenges to obtaining health care became more widespread in subsequent years, as you can see on the slide. Access is affected by cost, transportation, and even lack of medication. The second proximate determinant of chronic malnutrition that I'll take a look at today is environmental contamination. One dominant feature of child health in Africa and other environments is that lack of access to clean water and proper sanitation leads to many preventable diseases and death. Such a lack of access is affected by a multitude of factors, and in this slide, um, climate variability is one of the factors um, that has been modeled by Nobel um, Peace Laureate, Dr. Um, Bizek Kunzuwe. 
who depicts one way to model the relationship between um, climate variability and, high, and child health. So um, unpredictable water resources and improper sanitation lead to deleterious uh, children's health consequences. The work of Jean Humphrey is helping us to better understand the import of physical environment to child health. She states that a key cause of child undernutrition is a disorder known as environmental enteropathy, caused by young children living in conditions of poor sanitation and hygiene. The primary causal pathway from poor sanitation and hygiene to undernutrition is enteropathy and not diarrhea as we originally thought. This condition is caused by constant contamination and resulting intestinal inflammation. The failure of nutritional interventions and oral vaccines in, in the developing world may be attributed to this uh, disorder due to poor absorption. Water and sanitation are important factors affecting morbidity and growth stunting in particular that operate through environmental contamination. An Africana feminist framework recognizes factors at various le levels. Turning our attention to the Zimbabwe Demographic and Health Survey data, what becomes startlingly evident is that not only are water resources in short supply, as shown on this slide, um, but that these resources are not distributed equitably throughout the country. And so you see differences between the country overall and uh, rural areas here in the slide. Um, Further, my analysis shows that there's a preference for distributing these resources to Shona regions of the country, the ones dominated by the party in power, Zanu. For this portion of the analysis, I created a variable that allows me to look at the distribution of water uh, resources and sanitation by whether a child lives in Shona-dominated um, provinces. I found higher percentages of families living in Shona regions had water on site um, and uh, toilets um, related rel relative to percentages of the country overall. Moving on to logistic regression, in 1994, living in a Shona region increased the odds of water on site by as much as 5.92 times relative to living in non-Shona dominated regions. Since water resources are affected by urbanity, I ran a logistic regression analysis of water at home, including urban residents and Shona residents as, co as covariates, as you see, see here. Except for in 1999, Shona region residents increased the odds of water on site by as much as 5.33 times in 1994, even when controlling for living in urban areas. And results are similar for the distribution of flush toilets. Unfortunately, as with water resources, the distribution of flush toilets to households is not equitable among Zimbabwe's provinces. There again is a clear preference for Shona regions, even when controlling for rural and urban residents. While water resources and sanitation uh, were clearly uh, distributed with preferences to Shona regions, the next question is to look at uh, morbidity. Um, do these resources uh, have an impact on morbidity? For every year, except for in 1994, water on a child's premises was negatively related to stunting. So consistent with the findings of other researchers, excellent access to water, serving as a proxy for um, reduced environmental contamination, is associated with a lower chronic malnutrition rate, as evidenced by stunting. Violence and economic instability describe the context for child health. And as is shown on this slide, all children suffer as a result. Overall rates of morbidity reflect these political and economic weaknesses. In this table, I've compared the percentages of children falling between two and three standard deviations of the mean reference population for three anthropometric measures. And so if you look at the third um, column of the slide, you see that the numbers of children who are stunted increase for every year that comparative, comparative data is available and uh, remains at over 30% um, today. This reality is not only unfortunate, it is also damning. The government of Zimbabwe has impoverished its people and has literally stolen food out of the mouths of babies. This has occurred through the immiseration of the population of Zimbabwe through diversion of funds from equitable distribution of development resources 
to private wealth acquisition and maintaining um, ZANU political dominance. An integrated approach is needed to improve the health of Zimbabwe's children with clean water and sanitation as important components. Women and their families continue to work towards social change. They create numerous organizations and pursue myriad strategies in order to challenge the status quo in the country and provide for the health of their families. A slew of, select of suggestions are offered by the thoughts and women, the thoughts and actions of women's organizational, strategic, and even academic efforts that are depicted on the slide. It is with the faith that I have in the people of Zimbabwe that I humbly submit my conclusion and belief that Zimbabwe can be restored, shepherded by the wisdoms offered by everyday ordinary women in Zimbabwe who inspire my elucidations on an emerging Africana feminist thought. Thank you.